Okay, object oriented modeling. Work, there we go. <coughs> um, okay, when you uh, approach a development, program development, um, you'll be working from a list of requirements. Uh, and from them requirements, you will discover what uh, properties need to be stored and what functions or methods will need to take place in order to achieve your requirements. Oh, there we go. Um, if you're working procedurally, which is quite it's probably the well, most well known way of programming, um, you'll kind of take a step by step approach. You'll for example to bake a cake, gather the ingredients heat an oven, um, prepare the ingredients as in, you know, and then mix and, b and bake them for 10 minutes in this example. Um, now you wouldn't take the ingredients and just stick them in the oven uh, without preparing them and expect a cake. Uh, so you have to follow the procedure um, and that's what the computer will do if you instruct it this way. Uh, with object orientated, we take what we call the properties as the ingredients or the data and the methods which could be uh, place in oven, you know, um, the instructions and actions. Um, this is class Baker, um, a class is an object in its own way. Um, we'll go into that. So Baker, um, the properties of the Baker class are flour, butter, all the ingredients basically, all the equipment like the trays and has methods which is actions so baker pie, baker cake, bake cookies. Um, that's the way you would approach it from an object oriented model. Now with 3D game design um, say we were developing a driving game which requires a driver, a vehicle, a track. Um, each, each of those will be an object uh, and I'll explain. Go on, ah, there we go. Okay this is the class vehicle. Now vehicle has properties just like the Baker class did. Um, in this case we're talking about a car so we want to make the model the color how many doors it has what engine performance um, and they're known as attributes just to confuse everybody um, there's also the vehicle class has methods uh, again their behaviors things like what the car can do i.e. brake accelerate uh, change gear uh, turn and things like this um, okay now in order to create an object we have to instantiate. Um, now, if I want to create my own version of a vehicle, I might might name it, which is first of all the object name, uh, the class name, where it came from, which is the vehicle class, and the attributes. So this this Porsche is 2007. It's silver, and it's got two doors. Now, quite conveniently, uh, the way that data is stored as an object is also a way that you would approach uh, database structure. Um, for example, you might have a table called vehicle, and the vehicle would have a manufacturer. Um, well, this isn't normalized. You would you'd normalize this way more than what I've done, but it's just an example. Um, so there's my Porsche example which I made in Visio, um, which uh, came from the vehicle class and really the class structure is so good that you can you can create a nice table uh, a nice database in SQL for example and drag it straight into um, straight into ASPX using oh, well using a thing called links but that's not part of this uh, okay 
sample code, example code. Um, so say we've instantiated some objects here, um, a vehicle class, a driver class, and a track. And I've named them each. Um, new is the, instanti the instantiation um, sort of call. Uh, so now we've got the objects, we can start using them. So say I want to use the method enter vehicle, which is part of the, uh, let me remember, the part of the vehicle, no, it's part of the driver class so the driver fill dot enter vehicle and I'm telling it what vehicle I'm using the Porsche uh, next we want to put the Porsche on a track so I might say okay Porsche dot enter track which is another method of the vehicle um, and from here I want to put what track I'm going to so that's test track which I made up here and you know whilst the car's on the track you might want to control or you, you know you, this would be a way of program I don't think it's very appropriate but it's just an example so test track dot my Porsche dot drive fill and then a method from the the um, vehicle which is accelerate and I would put in pass in a variable or an object saying how much to accelerate what percentage um, now that would be good if you had pedals and stuff like that um, but really this is just showing you how you can define an object individually I mean this could be instead of saying driver fill here you could say all drivers um, and that would make them all turn <laughs> which wouldn't be cool but you know this is just a, a way you could approach it so um, I'm saying here that the test track and the Porsche and driver fill to turn at this direction and uh, again I would pass in left right or a percentage of an angle these sort of things um, so w objects versus procedure what's better uh, there isn't really a better it tends to be what you are trying to achieve what your requirements are so to create a driving game for example procedural code is cool it works um, you know, I don't think it would hinder you too much depending on the game's size and things like this because you can anticipate what the actions and events are going to be of each player and they're bound to follow one direction because that's generally the task and they're going to be collisions you can detect they're going to be maybe objects on the track they've got to avoid again these sort of things when you're working procedurally in a step-by-step -step manner and a game driving game like that is like a procedure in, a, in its own way uh, but on the opposite side of the game if you were building perhaps something like Grand Theft Auto which is a, a virtual world where players are free to explore now that's a lot harder to, to um, code in procedural um, methods or models um, basically because you've got a work out who's bumping into who and there's just too much going on for for the game I'm sure it's possible so I'm not going to say procedural code isn't possible in this sense but it would be so much code um, you'd have to think of everything uh, it'd be crazy so object orientated uh, would definitely be the way forward with that kind of design um, and that's it thanks for listening any questions <laughs> Uh...